His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path as you follow your dreams. In a quiet North Carolina town, 22 miles south of Raleigh, as a young nine-year-old girl, Paige King Johnson spent her summers under crepe myrtles, imitating the styles of Loretta, Patsy, Waylon, and Merle. Inspired by her grandfather, Paige followed her dreams to the bright lights of Music City in 2015 and found her voice when she attended Belmont University in Nashville. Along with her music, God laid another passion on her heart, His land. This is her story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Paige, it's so good to sit down with you today on a rainy day in Nashville. You've been busy. Yes, I have. What is going on with you? Just uh, this year, really, I tell everybody, you know, January and February for touring artists are usually a little more low key, but there really hasn't seemed to be any slowdown after the holidays. Um, I've been on the road pretty much every single weekend and making trips back and forth to Nashville to do work stuff and play shows here and write and record and all that kind of, you know, all the, the regular things that happen. So it's been very busy. Well, I looked at your tour list and it, you are packed. <laughs> you are on the road. As such a young artist, mm -hmm. tell me how, when you started, and are you living in Nashville or are you still in North Carolina? I'm back and forth between the two. I, I tell everybody I'm fortunate enough to have two really cool homes. <laughs> so, um, I, I, yeah, I do call Nashville home and I call North Carolina home. And, you know, I started playing music at a very young age. I was, I always say I was the kid that just needed attention. My mom loved um she always says that she loved being my mom and raising me as a kid because I was so vivacious and just all the time doing something and singing something or dancing in front of people just to try to bring joy to them. Are you the only child? Or do you have <laughs> no, to I'm not. But my older sister was very reserved, um, very much so just to herself. And so whenever I came along, they were like, what do we do with this kind just of kid? Just two of yours? Or <laughs> just okay. two of us. But I grew up singing in church. I grew up playing at family um, barbecues and birthday parties, just anywhere and everywhere that people were and that they asked me to come and entertain for them. And so, you know, I learned at a very young age the value of being able to bring joy and entertainment to groups of people. And that was very important to me and still kind of what I take in my job. How old were you when you first performed? Well, I started playing guitar, I learned at the age of 10. So that was really probably my first official performance for people. But uh, if you asked my parents or my grandparents, I was performing for them in the back seat of the car every time the radio came on. <laughs> Were you a country music fan then? Yes, I grew up on a lot of classic country music. So a lot of Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline and Merle Haggard and all the greats. So I read that you would imitate them and Yes. So after that, what, what did you do? Well, I started learning guitar at 10. My grandpa bought me a guitar um, for Christmas that year, and he really wanted to kind of see. I'd been taking some piano lessons earlier, and so that was kind of my first formal introduction to music. And uh, he thought, well, what happens if we put a different instrument in this girl's hands and see what happens? And so uh, encouraged me to get into lessons, and that was really when I started falling in love with music um, and learning more about it and seeing what it could do for me, um, you know, not just internally, but how I could reach bigger audiences and, um, you know, try to spread joy in that way. And so that was really just what I clung to. And, you know, I kept going from there and never really looked back. 10 years old. Yes. That's when it started. Mm -hmm. What were your teenage years like? <laughs> My mom would say probably nerve wracking at times. Um, I, I grew up on a farm in North Carolina. And so my teenage years were filled. That was really whenever I was trying to juggle both music being a huge passion of mine, but also um, agriculture in that whole world. I was in 4-H and FFA my entire childhood. And I spent nearly every weekend at a horse show or at a lamb show with our family. We traveled all the time going to those. And that was our whole world. 
Um, did you have horses growing up? We did. We always had at least one, um, but usually two or three that were roaming around the farm, and I always had farm chores. And, you know, my daddy and my mama said that was what kept us out of trouble all the time. <laughs> did, did, you have a, did you have a horse? I had a few over my childhood. I had a pony that was named Lester. He was kind of my starter project, as my parents would say. And then I graduated up to a horse um, named Buddy. And then my sister and I shared a horse um, named Butterbean, the most country name for an animal ever. And then my last show horse name was Bubba, and he was the best thing ever. And it broke my heart whenever I moved to Nashville to have to give him or sell him off to another family that would still be able to use him and, and get the, the good out of him. Did you have any trials or issues in high school that, or the typical teenage issues? Um, I wasn't a, a problem child. Uh, my parents, you know, they, they gave us enough projects to be able to keep us out of trouble. And I think that's important, don't yeah, you think? Yeah, we were very active, you know, between being active in our 4-H groups, our family has always been a very close-knit family. We did everything together, um, which I'm so grateful for looking back on now. And we were very active in our church and our youth group. And so between all that, you know, my parents were always were in the mindset of if you have enough, the, to, enough things to do, enough responsibilities, enough good people around you, then less bad things can come in. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for that childhood um, that they, you know, created for us. Well, tell me a little bit about your faith. I grew up in a faith-filled home from the very beginning. Um, we, uh, our Baptist church, which is where my dad went ever since he was little, and uh, my mom joined whenever her and him got married, and that's always been my home church, and uh, it was literally a quarter mile down the road. So on days whenever my parents weren't home and couldn't take me to church, I could walk to church. Um, and I was there pretty much every Wednesday night for youth group, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night. And I'm so grateful to have that community that really helped raise me um, and helped kind of get me to where I am now, both in music and just in life in general. And I wouldn't be here without them and, and the things that they allowed me to be able to do. Do you remember the time that you made that decision to give your life to the Lord? Yes, I do. Uh, my mom and I were actually just talking about this the other day um, when my sister and I decided we wanted to join our home church. And um, my dad decided then that uh, he was going to get baptized with us. And it was just such a special moment. And I will never, ever forget that. And it just it still holds so true in me. I was about seven or eight. I can't remember the exact time, but it was it was pretty young in my life. And I knew that, like, you know, there's just something that comes over you that just keeps telling you and keeps telling you. And I tried to fight it off for a little while, and it was just something that I knew had to happen and was meant for me. So it's beautiful that you and your dad and your sister mm -hmm. baptized all together. all together. That's beautiful. You know, I heard that um, at the age of 10, you got that guitar. And you were so excited about it because it was from your grandfather. Yes. And there is a challenging time after that. And we're going to talk about it when we come back. <laughs> 